Today, I'm going to talk about the Nipah virus infection that has been making headlines recently. It has been a cause for concern amongst people in Kerala, and it seems to have affected uh, a couple of people in the coastal area of Mangalore as well. So I'm going to give you a brief overview about this virus, what exactly it is, how it spreads, and how it is managed. So the Nipah virus is currently making headlines because it has killed more than 10 people. In fact, the latest uh, report suggests that it has killed around 12 people in the state of Kerala and is affecting many more individuals. What I'll be discussing is what exactly this virus is, how it is spread, what the symptoms are, how can it be treated and can it be prevented? So a little history about the virus itself. The Nipah virus is not really a new virus. It has been there for quite some time. It falls under a class of viruses known as paramyxoviruses and has a natural host, which is the fruit bat. So the virus is always resident within the fruit bat. It can infect pigs and humans. And the first outbreak that was described was back in 1999 in Malaysia and Singapore. So what used to happen there was there used to be pig pens, which I've used this picture over here, and there used to be mango trees nearby these pig pens. So these fruit bats, which are infected with the virus, would go and eat these mangoes. They would take small pieces of mango and drop them in the pig pen. So by, by eating the mangoes, they used to infect these pieces of mangoes, and this would then be eaten by the pigs. Now, the pigs would eat these mango pieces and develop a severe chest infection. And without knowing uh, this, the, the fact that the pigs had the infection, the farmers would then take them to the slaughterhouse, and people would, or humans would eat this uh, meat and then would get infected. So this is how it happened in Malaysia and Singapore. Now, around 300 people were affected in Malaysia and just about 100 or so people died from the infection. In India, sorry, in India, the symptoms are a little bit different. The uh, or starting of the, the condition was a little bit different. It was a regular occurrence in Bangladesh as back in 2001. And the only thing is the recent outbreak occurred in Kerala. Now, the source of infection was, of course, the bat, but how it entered humans was from the date palm sap. So bats would go and sit on the date palm uh, tree and they would lick on this sap and they would also urinate and defecate in it. And this was full of viruses, so it would affect that sap. This sap would be collected in big sort of jugs by uh, humans and then would be consumed without cooking. And this would then go on to lead infection. These uh, infection could spread between humans through close contact as well, which is another concern with this virus. Now, once the virus enters the body, it takes about 5 to 14 days to develop symptoms. The common symptoms include fever, headache, fatigue. And if it was left untreated, patients would become drowsy and may go into a coma. And this was because the virus would affect the lining of the brain and the brain itself, causing inflammation as a condition known as encephalitis. If this progressed, the coma would eventually lead to death. And as I mentioned earlier, about 100 people have died in Malaysia in 1999, and so far around 10 to 12 people have died in Kerala, according to news reports. So how is the Nipah virus diagnosed? Mostly it is diagnosed through clinical presentation, and I guess doctors need to have a high suspicion that this may be the condition. Now, if people have traveled to particular parts of Kerala, then if a patient presents with these sort of symptoms, then the doctor must consider this as being a possibility. There are no specific tests that have been uh, sort of come out that can give you an easy diagnosis, but throat swabs, urine tests, etc., may be uh, done. And a specific investigation known as real time PCR or RT PCR test has been used to detect the virus. Now, once the virus enters the body, the body's defense mechanism kicks in and produces what we call as anti antibodies. Now, there are different types of antibodies. The first type of antibody that is produced is known as the IgM antibody. And this can be detected by a test called the ELISA test, but it can take a few days to detect it. It is not something that can be done very quickly. So as such, there is no best test to diagnose it other than the clinical presentation itself. What about treatment? The treatment is primarily supportive. So if a patient has fever, tablets are given to control the fever. If the patient has a headache, we give headache medicines. If the patient is dehydrated, intravenous fluids may be required. And there is no specific antiviral uh, therapy that is available so far. There is, of course, research being conducted. Uh, a molecule known as ribavirin is an antiviral agent which has been studied uh, in uh, clinical trials in vitro, that is in dishes, in petri dishes, but no human trials have been conducted so far 
according to the World Health Organization. The best way to uh, prevent the infection is to prevent exposure to date palm, sap, and to bats. What about vaccine? So far, nothing effective yet has emerged. There are one or two trials that have looked at what we know as monoclonal antibody-based vaccines, which have been shown to work in hamsters, but there's nothing effective in humans yet. And I'm quite confident with the outbreak that uh, some research will be conducted in uh, attempting to uh, create a vaccine so that this virus does not spread uh, any quicker than it is doing now and we can prevent the infection. So that was a brief presentation about the Nipah virus. I hope you found it useful. Uh, for more information, you can visit the blog as well. Thank you.